this is just a little video just to update you all with what's happened in the past hour. Oh, now that's Sammy Bear, he's over there. He's had 20 mils of cat milk. I've been reading a few emails that people have sent me. Thank you so much. And I've got some very um, good advice. Look, this is the little syringe. I'm just after washing it out. You see, look. This is what I'm using. Oh, do you know, I just feel so relieved. I feel so relieved that I've managed to get some milk into him. So he's had two 10 ml shots of cat milk. I thought he was actually going to go yesterday. Um, I'll show you the little bed that I made up from an all in here. Um, over there on the on the bed look and the light's still on that's where I left him last night all wrapped up and the stove here lit and some water in this pan just to keep the air humid and a damp towel here you know just to provide humidity I thought he was a goner I actually thought that last night he was going to pass peacefully because he hadn't eaten, or more importantly, he hadn't drank anything in about three days. I really thought he was gone. This morning, about five o'clock in the morning, Jack came into the bedroom, because I leave the bedroom door open. He came into the bedroom, and I thought, what's going on? And he just woke me up. And just down here, just down here behind the sofa, you see, look, just opposite the bedroom door. Um, this is where I move his little bed at night. So I got up and I switched on the lamp and I came out. Jack was in the bedroom with me. And I said, what's, what's up with you? And here on this little bed of his was Sammy Bear. I don't know how he got from the lodge. I mean, all the doors are open, obviously, but I don't know where he found the strength to come through. But you see, he wanted to be with me and Jack. So this morning, I was making that little video and I was just walking around. I was walking around the land. I mean, look at the poor state of him. You know, the poor, the poor little soul. <sighs> Sorry. Okay, pull yourself together now, Colette. So, I was walking around the land and I really felt my father's presence with me. I, mean, I told you the wee story about how he saved the hen, the poor alcoholic hen. But I just felt such a strength and determination from him. And my mother was always a very emotional creature. Which is where I get my emotional side from. And I thank her for that. Because emotions keep us grounded. And keep us real and allow us to be human. But my father, he was a kind of man. He was a small man, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't at all, you know, um, strong looking man. In fact, he was quite a small man. But I'll tell you. You would not take him on because he had the intelligence and he was so articulate. He could bring you down. 
with one sentence. He was the kind of man that you'd, you know, if, if, if you were in a fight with him, you could knock him down 99 times, he'd get up 100. He would not be defeated. So I just felt his strength and I thought, when I seen Sammy Bear on the little, on Jack's little cushion, I thought to myself, okay, so there's nothing left to lose now. Sammy Bear is saying, look, my heart is strong. I can't eat, I can't drink because I've kind of given up on that. But my heart is strong and I just got this message and my heart is strong and I just thought, well, I've nothing left to lose now. I can go over to the farm stores, I can buy a feeding syringe and much as it's uncomfortable for him to be force fed, there's nothing left to lose. You know when you're caught between a rock and a hard place? Well, you may as well just come out fighting. So, I've been over there, I've got the syringe. He said 20 mils, two, two 10 mil shots, with about 20 minutes of rest in between. So, for the first time now, he's actually had, he's actually got some food in his stomach. It's liquid food. And he's not just sleeping, he's kind of snoring. But you can see from his sorry state, there's a, it's a, going to be a long road back to health. But much as I thought he was going to die over the weekend and the weekend before he was going to die, and how every time I touched him he purred. So the message was strong and clear, you know, that he just wanted to be here and not to have to go back and spend a night in the vets. He doesn't like the vet. And he doesn't like travelling in the car. So, having read... Uh, sorry, this video is all over the place in terms of what I'm talking about. It's so disjointed. But anyway, just bear with me. Um, I've got some good advice as well now from various people. And my daughter, my eldest daughter's on her way over. So, um, yes, rehydrate, um, convalescent food. There's a very good uh, vet veterinary stores in Carrick. I'm going to go in there as well today and get a rake of stuff. And I'm just going to now for the next 48 hours. I am going to, see, I've got my little timer set over here. Sorry, Jack. I've got my wee timer set. It's, it has an hour setting on it. So this is set and it's ticking down. Let me see, where have we got to? Another 35 minutes. So I'm going to feed him on the hour every hour with about, you know, 10 mils or something like that of food just, just to bring him up gradually. But look at He's listening. His little ears are up. He has a mighty heart. He is a very strong boy. But, you know, to be honest, over the past... See, I, I can't even remember how old he is, but my daughter reassures me that he came to me on Samhain 2012. That makes him six years old. Over the past six years, he has been ill on numerous occasions. And he's gone right downhill. He's never gone this far downhill, though. But as I thought to myself this morning, you know, when you when you get that ill, that you cannot eat, and then your body goes without food for, you know, days, you actually lose your appetite. This is what happens to a lot of old people. Um... So anyway, look, that's just a wee update. I just wanted to reassure you that for the first time in about two weeks, I actually have some real hope now because I reached that make or break point. 
and I think from there I've got a huge amount of strength. And I think that, um, I think my father's channeling it through me. Because that man wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> so, there's my knitting look. <laughs> Sitting knitting. My father always said that my mother should have been sat at the steps of the guillotine knitting because that's what a lot of, <laughs> apparently that's what some women did in Paris. My mother was a great knitter. She knit through every crisis. And some of her crazy jumpers, well they were mad creations. But, I take the advice I give to other people. In a time of despair, create something. Or you could also say, in a time of despair, bloody well do something. Isn't this interesting now? I'm just thinking. Sammy Bear and the trials and tribulations is like a metaphor for out there in Mother Earth. So as my father would have said, don't give up and bloody well get on with it. So, blessings to you all. Oh, gosh, I feel I can breathe.